All right, so today we're going to talk about high, uh, decorative concrete. So there's a variety of different um, concrete does not have to be gray. It can be a variety of different colors and patterns. And so not everything has to be broom finished or trialed. Um, there's lots of different things. Concrete can look in a lot of different ways. It can be very, very, very beautiful. Um, so this is some of the projects I've been on, some of the work I've done. Um, and so there's lots that go into to decorative concrete work. Um, it really is an art form. The colors that you're going to use or the stains that you're going to use, the stamp patterns that you have, um, the little details that, that you spend time making sure every little bitty steps right, the even sealing the concrete and what type of sealer you use and when you apply it, it all matters. So lots of details here. And I'm just trying to give an overview of what decorative concrete is. So not getting the details, not teach you how to, um, to do everything, but just kind of give you a good overview. Um, I should also state that, so most of the time, whenever you want like colored concrete, it's important to realize it's not from the cement usually. Now there is a few places in the country that make a white cement. Um, I believe there's, uh, there's one down in Texas that makes a, 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 a pure white cement. Um, I believe there's one up in Pennsylvania too. I think they're the same company, uh, cement company, but you know, we don't see a lot of white. Um, there's not a lot of cement companies out there that, that, that don't make some type of gray cement. So usually it's, uh, so the white cements are kind of unique. Um, they don't have very much iron in them to make them um, white. So um, it's pretty cool, but we used to be able to make other types of cement, um, uh, colored cement, I should say, but because of some of the technology that's really occurred with these pigments, you really don't necessarily have to have the cement a different color. In fact, what you can do is you could just buy a bag like you see here. Uh, bags of cement used to be where you just cut them open and, uh, and they, uh, you know, and just pour them in there and then you throw the bag away. Now they're even dissolvable. So it's really cool, some of that technology. Um, so you can just add the pigment to the ready mix truck. Other things you can do is place a um, dry shake hardener whenever you're floating the top of that um, concrete down, when you're trying on the top of the concrete, you just add some of the, con uh, add some of it then which provides a good dye on the top of the concrete. So it changes the color then. Um, like you can provide different blotches and, or you can make it all one uniformed. Um, just depends on how you want to put, apply that shake hardener. Other things you can do is whenever you're stamping that concrete, you can come by and you can use, um, throw a colored release agent down. And that's also something you can do. So that release agent, kind of works as a, it can either be powdered or it can be um, liquid. And it kind of works just like a, um, like you think of when you cook and you put Pam um, or butter down, something like that. Uh, maybe you put, you put flour in the, um, in the cake pan before you put the batter in there, stuff like that. So that your food doesn't stick to, um, to, to the cooking container. So same thing, you spray down your stamps um, or you throw the powder down on your stamps um, and those powders or those, or those liquid, um, those liquid uh, release agents, they actually can have color in it. So you can provide a really cool two-tone color if you really want to. Um, you can also come back and just provide a stain to that hardened concrete at a later date. So pretty, pretty common, these, there's these pigments. You can buy all sorts of different ones. I believe this is um, a picture from Butterfield. They've, you know, there's, there's, there's multiple different companies that have done an excellent job mm -hmm. um, providing, really, uh, providing really good pigments um you know and doing a lot of good decorative concrete um type supply to the industry 
And so this is just kind of one of the little brochures in it that kind of shows you, you know, you could pick, you know, U21 sandstone if you want. Obviously, when you look at these, you're not going to see things like purples and pinks and stuff like that. Those are a little bit harder to come by. Um, I'm pretty sure you can go out there and, and talk to the, um, the, the person that sells the color and you can figure something out. Um, but most people don't want like a pink or a purple driveway. Usually they stick to browns and tans and um, grays and stuff like that. So, um, you know, and even blacks, they even see some, some whites, um, some white stuff. So, uh, you know, just kind of be aware of that. Um, sometimes, you know, like I said, they're in powdered bags um, that are usually dissolvable now. Um, Ten years ago, they, they weren't necessarily. You'd cut them. But today you can just literally go on the back of that ready mix truck. You could throw that dissolvable that bag down into that ready mix truck. Um, and then, you know, obviously you read the back of it. So there's so many bags per, per yard that you put in there um to get to, to to achieve the color you want and you can do the same thing with um there's actually liquid buckets that some batch plants have so if a ready mix company does concrete producer does a lot of um decorative type concrete um, they may actually buy a decorative you know pigment type system that's uh that usually has three different um liquid uh in essence, buckets, and you just type in what code you want, and just like you like you do at a paint store, and they'll spray all three in there together and mix it all up, and then after it's completely mixed up and looks great, they'll actually go and they can um, um, it can be a five gallon bucket, and then you just dump that in the back of the truck, or it might even actually dispense into that truck. Just depends on how things are set up. But there's some um, really cool things that, that I've seen, um, um, you know, in the last few years with these colored pigments and how they're um, added to the truck. So when placing colored concrete, um, like I'll say here, with this is actually my dad's driveway. And, um, you know, he tore out his 20-year-old driveway and he started pouring it back. And so... Uh, I believe this is a gray concrete uh, mix is what he wants. So, um, and it was two toned. So he, I think he just really, he didn't add any gray color. He just left the concrete the, the way the color was, but then he went back with a release agent that was below, had a little bit of black or charcoal type looking and really did a great job of, of making it like Pennsylvania um, brick on top. But um, the, the key is he had a huge, very, very long driveway. So probably um, like 30 yards was probably what this driveway was. So, you know, about three trucks in essence. And so, you you know, you have to be really consistent um, when you're pouring, you know, 30 yards of decorative concrete. You know, you can't add too much water. You have to keep the water content consistent because, you know, if, if you're doing like a, uh, especially reds, if you're doing a, a red color, and all of a sudden you add a little too much water. Now you, now you have more of a pink looking um, driveways, you know, um, so they don't match up at all, you know, whenever it's two tones. So you really gotta be careful about that. You don't wanna add too much water. You wanna keep the water consistent as possible. You don't wanna add water to the top of that concrete whenever you're troweling it, whenever you're finishing it, stuff like that. Um, obviously you, uh, you don't, you know, especially if it's air and train concrete, you obviously don't want to try all the top of that. Um, but, you know, sometimes you can go out with a Fresno and do a very, very, very light um, finish that kind of removes all those little bitty lines and imperfections. But, um, but you really don't want to add water anywhere. You want to get on it just right. So that's why a lot of times we do decorative concrete work. You can, you can, you know, you can you, it take you have to, it takes more labor it takes more uh, finishers to do everything but you really need to be on top of it so that people aren't having to add water to get the the finish looking good because you can't really add water to this stuff um, it'll just change the color wherever you add the water at 
that will change the um, the color of, you know, it, it'll change it to a lighter shade typically. All right, so there's also lots and lots and lots of different stamp patterns. These are some pictures I've taken. Um, sorry if they're slightly blurry, but in essence, you have a rock pattern here. You have a salt pattern. Um, you have a Pennsylvania type brick pattern that you think of. And then you also have these um, boards, um, these wooden textured board panels that are super popular um, right now. Um, and, it's, and it's important to realize that some of your stamps are gonna be really difficult to, um, to properly line up and stamp. Um, and, and the smaller your stamps are, the harder it is to get to do a large area. But if you, so you need really need some small stamps to do some of the smaller areas and some of the finite details um, that the larger stamps will miss. And, you know, and, and so just to kind of realize you really need a variety of sizes of stamps um, that will have the same texture pattern because it, it really will help you with um, making sure you get all those little details correct. All right, so when we talk about color release, um, here's me, I'm stamping um, a, a, a pool deck. And so, you know, this would be me before, you know, before I lost all my hair, but um, my cousin is actually spraying a really colored release agent. That's a little black pigment, a little charcoal pigment onto, that's where you can see the little water marks. They're not actually water, it's a liquid, like I said, colored release agent that's sprayed on there. So you can see actually where it was sprayed and where it's not sprayed. Um, and obviously we sprayed the stamps before we even started stamping. So um, I'm placing this stamp down um, where it was, uh, where we just sprayed a bunch of colored release. And I'm gonna grab that tamper and I'm gonna tamp all the different around it and, the, and all, all different parts of the stamp. And I wanna make sure everything's butted up just right. And it's all aligned looking great. Um, and, you know, then after I get that one done, then I'll come over here um, where my where my cousin's actually uh, right, right behind there where that, where that tamper's at, that green one. And I'll probably actually take that green one and possibly put it up here. Um, so I think all the stamps are the, the exact same pattern. So sometimes you may turn them, stuff like that, so that people can't necessarily see that. Um, they might slightly, um, you know, it's harder for them to see the exact same pattern being placed all at the same time. So sometimes rotating it um, works really well. Um, the, 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 you know, for the colored release agents, ASTMC 979. And again, like I said before, you can, it, there's can be liquid where it's nice in a spray bottle like this, or you can maybe take like a five gallon bucket and the, the powder pigments in that. You can actually take a brush, um, kind of like a, whenever you broom, um, when you have a hand broom for brooming the top of the concrete, a real small one, you can actually take that and scoop some of that, pit, that powdered pigment and throw it on your stamps and throw it on, your, uh, on top of that concrete. But you'll have to come back later and wash everything off. So it can be pretty messy how it's all done and you for sure will have to throw away probably most of your clothes because you know the stain will just get on them and it'll be really difficult to wash off so just kind of be aware of that so i didn't have any picture of the of the dry shake um, color hardener i apologize um, sometimes when you do things um, and it's just kind of natural to you always forget to take pictures, but in essence, like I was talking about with the powdered, um, release agent on top, it's the same way, except for you apply it, not when you're stamping, but actually whenever you're floating, um, sometimes even trial, uh, yeah, trialing, lightly trialing the top, you'll throw this dry shake color on there. Um, typically, you know, um, with the release agent. Um, the, the, the powdered pig, the, the powdered one can be more of like a pigment, um, for the release agent, whereas this little pigment, whether it's floating in the liquid or 
it's um, it's just a powered pigment in the actual uh, release agent. If it, you know if you're throwing it with the, with the little small little broom, um, but typically for a dry shake hardener, what that's really all about is not only is it where you're applying it, so on the top of the finish. Uh, whenever you're finishing the, the surface when you're floating it, um, but you're also dealing with, um, there might be some Portland cement in there. There may be, uh, uh, typically most pigments have a plasticizer, so a water reducer, um, that's a powder um, already to just kind of help, help increase that workability. But you may actually find some graded, lightly graded um, fine aggregate in there. So just some filler. You may find some uh, material, um, like I said before, pigment. So you may find some uh, pigment to change the color. You may find some cement to um, kind of, you know, help help bond with the other cement. So there's, you know, there's a combination of stuff in this these dry shake color hardeners. So just kind of be aware of that. So you know, whether you put it in one put it in blotchy and, and blotchy in different areas, or you want it throughout the entire one. This is a way that's a little cheaper so that you're not just dyeing the concrete all the way through the same color. You're just um, putting it maybe on the surface. So as long as you don't have scaling issues and stuff like that, um, this is actually a really cool alternative. So um, when we talk about stain, so maybe you don't wanna do anything different in the concrete. Maybe it's already hard. Um, so you don't want anything to the fresh concrete because it's already been placed. And so, you know, maybe, maybe it's two or three year old concrete and you want to come and stain it. Well, this is, um, you know, you want, you want to change the color. So this is something where you can apply different colors. You can get a little bit more exotic with, with the color that you pick. Um, typically, you know, if it's inside, you really want to make sure you do a water base stain. Um, if, if you're going on the outside, if you're really worried about um, if, it's gonna, if it's gonna stain or not, sometimes an acid stain will work a little bit better, but it does, it, does, uh, it does stink quite a bit more. And you have to come back, especially with your acid stains, and go and actually wash uh, the acid back off. So you kind of have to be aware, a lot of your water-based you may not have to actually come back and wash them later. So, but it but it may not work as well as the it may not you know stain the concrete as well as the acid stain. So just kind of be aware of that. Um, the effects with the stain in general is how well your surface preparation was. It did you take a power washer and brush off all that dirt uh, that was on top of that concrete so that that concrete you know it's a, like a sponge like a hardened sponge so it's going to absorb quite a bit of that stain. So did you, uh, um, is, is it, is it, are you just staining the dirt that's in the pores or did you actually take a power washer and wash all them? So obviously, you know, you don't want dirts or oils in that concrete because it'll really uh, be more difficult to, to stain. Also, the age of your concrete plays a huge deal in this. So, you know, um, if it's just, if it's under five years old, it's going to be a lot easier to stain than something that is 20 years old. So typically if you get above about 15 years, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot harder. Um, so just be aware if you can stain it within the first, you know, three years, that's kind of ideal for, for most applications. But again, you know, it just depends on what your um, how you're staining everything. So this is a job we did wasn't, you know, um, obviously we didn't have super tight floor tolerances. So you can see some of the, the lighting, um, uh, reflective lighting that's actually on this. But, uh, you know, we didn't exactly know if they're going to be staining it or not. But uh, so this is what we did after they put all the walls up. We came back and we went and provided a stain. So, um, you know, so that's kind of what it looks like. It can provide a lot of blotchiness that looks pretty good. And like I said before, you gotta be real careful when you're, when you're staining because you don't want oil spots. You don't want places that's actually scaling. Um, if you have some weird stains, um, obviously that's going to, 
um, you know, staining it with uh, with a colored stainer, you know, may not may not work as well. It may stay the same color or just, you know, might provide a little bit of a lighter um, color. So also different shades of gray. So they added water. This is actually um, the edge of the concrete where they added water at. And then over here is actually the slab where they trialed and didn't add as much water. So you can clearly tell, you know, uh, what those two look like. So sealing that concrete can also look a little different. Um, you know, there's different types, whether it's a saline or a silicone or acrylic type sealer. Um, they can all work. They can all work fairly well, um, depending on what application you're looking for. Um, typically, if you have cars that are going to be driving fairly fast over over that concrete, you want to go with a uh, with a silene type based sealer because it doesn't make the top of the concrete super slick. If your person loves the uh, the owner loves the the nice uh, uh, you know shininess finish on the top, then, you know, you don't obviously don't want to go with a saline based. You may want to go with like a silicone type based um, sealer. Um, but you sell the concrete for a couple different reasons. Number one, you want to protect, you know, if you have, if it's colored concrete, if it's stained concrete, anything like that, you want to protect that concrete, make sure that you, you know, make sure that the concrete's going to stay that color for, for a long time. Um, you want to make sure things like, you know, the impurities don't go in there. You make sure there's not a bunch of dirt that can, um, you know, really affect how good the concrete looks and stuff. Um, using a sealer, you can also prevent moisture. You can prevent corrosion, too. So, you know, provide a, a moisture barrier. So there's lots of different reasons why. You really don't want to go out and seal that concrete, um, you know, the next day after you pour it because to be honest it the, the poor structure um is, is going to look a little different the ph in it's going to look a little different and so a lot of times the alcohols that are in your sealers will actually um, evaporate and so the whole sealer will actually evaporate and come out uh, not a whole sealer but you know depending on how depending on how old your concrete is but there'll be a certain percent that won't be able to uh, truly, you know, seal that concrete. So they recommend you to do at least 28 days before you go out and you seal it. So um, this is polished concrete. This is like a little sample that we did polished. So it's pretty cool. Um, they take, take a grinder and they can grind and uh, make that top of that concrete where they just remove the paste that's on top. And so they can actually show um you know show all the, the little different particles of the rock and everything and sand and and where they came together so it's kind of a cool little way um that's why the exposed aggregate where the little river rock is exposed on top so you pretty much how to do that is you place the concrete um and then um typically you will put you know maybe it's a retarder sometimes my grandfather would use sugar water and you spray on the top of that concrete, um, you know, um, that retarder agent. And so the top of it doesn't set up, the, the paste doesn't set up, but everything below that paste does start setting up. And so what you could do is the top of that concrete can get really hard. And then um, the paste that's there, you can actually take a, like a commercial, you know, concrete broom and broom the top and remove just the cream. Um, so it's really cool removing that little paste from it. And all of a sudden you have a bunch of river rock like you see here. Um, so pretty cool how, how that's done. Um, this is a house driveway where we're starting to stamp right here. Um, you can see uh, they have the order back over here on the left that they're about ready to place. And then they already sprayed the little release um, agent out and they're, you know, sprayed their stamps and they started, and they put the stamps on the ground. So 
Um, lots of different details that, that go on um, here. And so they're going to stamp the entire, this entire pattern here. And so I think it's just a, a, you know, very much like a rock textured look. Here is, uh, we actually had side forms that were textured. And so that's how you got the sides and everything looking really nice is the forms actually had texture on them already. And so you just gotta make sure you vibrate all the sides really well so that they can take the shape of that texture. And then you can place stamps on top. So I believe we, uh, um, we colored it brown and then we had another release agent that was a darker brown um, that we sprayed on there as we went. So that's kind of what it looked like. So, um, all right, so that's kind of the end of that. Hope you learned, hope you had a great 